Afterward, since Rene Enriquez defected from La M.A., there have been a number of new mafia prosecutions in Southern California. On April 24, 2006, Lyme's Daryl Casperum was one of four gangsters charged in connection with the Mexican Mafia contract murder. The 48-year-old mafioso was caught as a result of undercover surveillance by the Los Angeles Intra-Agency Metropolitan Police Apprehension Crime Task Force, LA Impact. The case is one of nearly a dozen filed by Impact after a 16-year-old wannabe gang member gunned down a California Highway Patrol officer as he emerged from the Pomona Courthouse. Castron was charged with being the shot caller in the area, which was ruled by mafia-related street gang called the 12th Street Sharkies. On June 16, 2006, the mafia's Raul Weddle Sherm Leon was named as the prison-based ringleader in a San Diego federal racketeering and drug conspiracy case involving 36 street gang defendants with ties to Miami. The indictment spelled out a massive drug conspiracy and three murders, including the execution of an extortionist who claimed to be a Mexican Mafia member and an inmate at a state prison. Also, prosecutors charged three gangsters in connection with the shooting of a 12-year-old boy who survived. It was the first time in San Diego that federal prosecutors had used RICO to go after gang members. FBI agent in charge Dan Dwozlowski said, Simply put, they are urban street terrorists who rule by violence. They are the closest thing to traditional organized crime in San Diego. On September 12, 2006, MM member Ruben Nidal Castro and 10 18 Street gang members were indicted in another federal racketeering case in which they were charged with controlling narcotics trade on the entire west side of Los Angeles. The Fed said, that 36-year-old Castro oversaw the operation from a cell in the highest level maximum security federal prison in Florence, Colorado, often referred to as Supermax, where he was serving a life sentence. Prosecutors say orders were relayed through Castro's girlfriend, who also collected the feria. On December 12, 2006, the Drug Enforcement Administration spearheaded the arrest of two Mexican Mafia members and 19 associates in San Bernardino County in what was described as a nationwide methamphetamine trafficking operation. Agents seized $1 million worth of meth, $1 million in cash, and 56 guns. Lima's 42-year-old Salvador Toro Hernandez and his 38-year-old brother Alfred faced criminal conspiracy charges. Agents said that San Bernardino has become the hub for meth produced in Mexico and distributed across the United States. On December 18, 2006, Lime is Peter Sanya Ojeda, the mobster who first began to organize street gang taxing in Orange County, California, was sentenced to 14 years in federal prison. The 64-year-old mobster was one of 28 gangsters sentenced to prison for terms ranging from 2 to 24 years as a result of federal racketeering convictions. The indictment alleged dozens of criminal acts as the Ojeda organization taxed gang members and drug dealers on the streets of Orange County and in the Orange County Jail and prisons. Those who resisted were assaulted by Ojeda enforcers. On April 27, 2007, another multi-agency gang task force arrested 13 gangsters who were funneling tax money to Lyamis Richard Psycho Aguirre, who was serving a life prison sentence at Pelican Bay State Prison. Investigators said that two camaradas loyal to Aguirre enforced control of the entire Coachella Valley 130 miles northeast of San Diego with killings, assaults, and home invasion robberies. 75-year-old Jovita Aguirre, Cycle's 5-foot, 1-inch mother, was charged with collecting payments and passing orders for her mafioso son. Cops confiscated 50 guns and a live pipe bomb during an investigation dubbed Operation Clean House. The trial is pending. More investigations are in the works, and there is plenty of evidence to suggest that Miami is spreading its power and influence across the United States. Let's start in the nation's federal prison system. During RICO cases in the late 1990s, the feds thought that these indictments would diminish the organization's power to scatter convicted Mexican Mafia members among federal prisons across the country, split away from Miami's base in the California system. Daniel Vasquez, a former San Quentin warden turned consultant said, all it seems to do is spread the seed, the seed of a bad plant. 
Already there is a separate four-man federal Emmy commission. The commissions are Rudolfo Champ Reynoso, Ruben Rube Soto, Philip Negro Segura, and William Willie Govea. According to Rene, they have ultimate authority or palabra over all Mexican Mafia dealings in the federal prison system, including the making of new members. Law enforcement intelligence believes that Soto had already established a relationship with celebrated Italian godfather John Gotti at the U.S. Penitentiary in Marion, Illinois before the Teflon Don died of cancer. On April 21, 2005, the Federal Emmy faction demonstrated their bold and violent presence in the U.S. penitentiary system. 64-year-old Manuel Tati Torres, a longtime Mexican Mafia member, was beaten and stomped to death by at least three other mafioso at the Supermax prison in Florence, Colorado. The facility, sometimes called the Alcatraz of the Rockies, was built to house the most notorious inmates in the nation. It was the first time in the decade-old prison's history that an inmate was executed by other prisoners. The Fremont County Coroner called it a vicious beating with severe injuries to the face, neck, and chest. While Torres was eliminated is not clear. What is clear is that Lyame didn't hesitate to do it in broad daylight on a mini yard at the nation's most secure penitentiary. Rene Enriquez warns that Lyame is spreading like an incurable cancer. While incarcerated at the U.S. Penitentiary in Marion, Laemis Ralph Perico Rocha in 2001 wrote to Rene Enriquez at Pelican Bay using code words that he was trying to get involved in NAFTA, code for Mexican drug cartels, to expand negocios, business, overseas, e, and borders. The family Emmy is looking to open a few more restaurants, legitimate businesses in Colorado, Texas, Chicago, etc. After beating another in prison attempted murder case in federal court, Perico was paroled in March 2007. In February 2008, Perico was shot and wounded on the streets of Norwalk. Rocha's injuries were minor, but investigators say he was hit under orders from Laemis Jacko Padilla, Renee's former cellmate and friend. Two months earlier, Jacko's wife and five others were arrested and charged with trying to murder Rocha and another mafioso for encroaching on Padilla's drug turf in the San Gabriel Valley. Their trial is still pending. According to cops, Rocha and Rafael Cisco Gonzalez Munoz pilfered tens of thousands of dollars from drug dealers in Padilla's territory. Sheriff detectives say that the orders to hit Rocha came from Padilla at Corcoran State Prison and that Rocha is still on the lista. No charges have been filed. In December 2005, the FBI opened a National Gang Intelligence Center in Washington, D.C. to help coordinate a new national gang strategy with local and state law enforcement. As happened with the Italian Mafia in previous decades, the Federal Bureau of Investigation has been late to the party. Its interest in the growing national gang threat was piqued when members of a group called Mara Sabatrusha or MS-13 began to proliferate in the northern Virginia, Washington, D.C. area. MS-13 started in Los Angeles during the 1980s with a bunch of Salvadorian war refugees and moved east, where gangsters killed three federal agents and demonstrated their penchant for hacking up victims with machetes. The National Gang Intelligence Center estimates that there are 8,000 MS-13 members in the United States spread across 31 different states, with an additional 20,000 members in foreign countries. The FBI in 2005 formed an MS-13 National Gang Task Force. The irony here, according to retired LA County Sheriff Sergeant Richard Valdemar, arguably one of the nation's foremost experts on La M and other street gangs, is that MS-13 is the junior varsity. MS-13 pays tribute to La M. That number 13 marks MS loyalty to the Mexican Mafia. He insists that La M is the big time, not MS. The prominent 13 that is part of the MS logo, in fact, stands for the letter M. And that M stands for Mafia, the Mexican Mafia. The 13 marks loyalty to La M, just as it does for the vast majority of other Latino gangs in Central and Southern California. Albuquerque, New Mexico in 1995 was hit with a plague of violence that confounded local law enforcement. The homicide rate doubled as gang members from Los Angeles took over the crack trade in a high crime area of Southeast Albuquerque, already known as the War Zone. One LA gangster said, 
when we were out there, we went out there like a big missile and they didn't have no guard up. They didn't have no bullets to fly when we came with the missile. Detective Rich Lewis, an Albuquerque City cop, for four years partnered up with the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco and Firearms, ATF, agent Gary Ainsworth to undercover the biggest racketeering case in the history for the U.S. attorney in that city. More than 100 weapons were seized, including AK-47s, SKS, MAC-11s, and Tech-9 submachine guns. Fifty defendants went to prison for murder, attempted murder, and drug dealing. They were a mix of cholos from Southern California gangs in East Los Angeles, West Los Angeles, South Los Angeles, Norwalk, Duarte, Lennox, and the Inland Empire. A rock of cocaine that sold in LA for $3 could be sold on the streets of Albuquerque for 20 bucks. The trigger-happy gang members, many of them rivals at home, worked together to take over the drug trade on Albuquerque streets. They commonly identified themselves as Sureño 13, 13 a symbol of loyalty to the Mexican Mafia, and some of their drugs were traced to Lyme connections. A shot caller from Lennox with Mexican Mafia ties tried to keep the peace among the Sureño factions and ensure a continual flow of drugs. A murderous clique from a Compton-based gang called the Tortilla Flats swept into Oklahoma City in 2001 and quickly used murder, threats, and violence to take over the local drug trade. The heavily armed crew was led by a Mexican Mafia associate who proudly posed for pictures holding an assault rifle. Along with large quantities of methamphetamines and cocaine conservatively estimated at more than $4 million in street value, Cops confiscated enough military issue C4 explosives to blow up a small building. A federal task force put 16 defendants in prison for terms ranging from 4 years to 30 years. One of the convicted gang members who does not want to be identified said, We went and we were sent by the Mafia. 18th Street, a gang with an estimated membership of 20,000 in the Los Angeles area, has also been identified by the FBI as a national gang strategy priority group with ties to thousands of other 18th Street.